Christmas is two days away, so it's like opening presents. Hey there. In this video, I'm just gonna do some unboxing. And also, I just wanted to say that one of some of the reviews that you could expect fairly soon would include a review of Shiseido Zen on the fence. Another one is Homage à l'homme by Lalique. This was also a blind buy. I like it. I'll go into detail in the future. This discontinued and even back then it was kind of rare. I was surprised that somebody parted with it. It's Zerjoff 1862 Polo. And another recent pickup is Amouage Fate. 10 out of 10. Amouage Fate is the cumin that's impossible to dislike. I mean, if you if you have a problem with the cumin in Declaration by Cartier, if you have a problem with the cumin in Kenzo Jungle, I could understand that. But the cumin in Amouage Fate, it's imp you can't not like it. It's just so good. And it's not a cumin bomb. Not at all. On to the unboxing. This fragrance is by Nishane. It doesn't seem to be too well liked. The most popular from scents from Nishane, I am not such a huge fan of. I don't think they're bad, but they just didn't really do it for me. Like Ani, to me, was it just wasn't very special. Another thing by Nishane that's so well loved that oh Hachivat, it's okay. I mean, nothing to write home about. I think what I disliked about Hachivat is that it, it's a bit too syrupy. If you love Hachivat, then great for you. I'm not saying that it's horrible. <laughs> Why do people take it so personally? I don't mean that rhetorically. Why indeed do people take their fragrances so very personally? I wonder if it has something to do with the fact that the nasal apparatus is so close to the brain so that maybe one sense of smell is the very physical embodiment of subjectivity itself. Subjectivity that has nothing to do with ego and could it be that the nose is the very physical embodiment of the self Not the ego because ego is just psychology Nishane Muskane Was not even in the radar. It's just it just so happens that somebody posted and the price was Kind of too good to be true and I couldn't pass it up. I committed to this bottle and then it only later occurred to me to ask, is it really powdery? Because I don't, I don't like powdery. Even as a, ouch. Even as a child, I really hated powder. FSM indeed. I don't want to spray it yet. What I want to spray right now is something I've been dying to try for the longest time. One of the blind buys. The one that I've smelled before, which I really like. Monthly Finn Arpel's Bois de Riz. Bois de Riz turned up in, fra in Fragrance X. And then I thought, I've tried it before and I, I know that I like it. And then I thought that, oh, I'll just let it go. And then when it suddenly went out of stock, that's when I realized, oh man, I lost a good one there. And so when it turned up again, and I think it's still available, I just knew I had to pick it up. Now, these two blind buys. One of them is Yop Le Bain, Carner Barcelona Tardes gets compared to Yop Le Bain. So I'm I'm really looking forward to comparing the two. Is there any truth? And the other one is, and this is what I've been dying to smell for a really long time. It's Ancre Noir by the Sport, Le Lique. You know, with these cheapies, I always think that, oh, they're gonna be around forever. I don't need to buy it now. And I realized that Wait, what happened? So I was gonna get Wadiris and then I just needed to add a couple of things into the into the cart to get the free shipping. Moment of truth. Of course I love Ancanoa. I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna like this. Is it It's a blind buy win. It's really good. Highly uncommon. It does smell fresh. There's something kind of plasticky, in a good way. I wasn't too afraid of blind buying Muscane because the nose behind Nishane Muscane is the same person who did Alexandria II, or Alexandria II, or Alexandria II, I do not know. 
Alexandria to it is. So his name is Chris Maurice. I love Alexandria too so much that I'm starting to think that well, he can't possibly fail. So I went ahead. But people, people, many people, just like Nishane Muscane. I can't quite remember what they were saying against it. But anyway, time to test it. Like I said before, I was looking, really looking for more of the summer fragrances or summer friendly fragrances. And strangely enough, you know what? Um, I'm kind of like getting ahead of myself here. But Fate, I'm a watch Fate, it's summer friendly. It's not a strictly cold weather kind of thing. Even Amawash Memoir can be worn in summer. I think it has really more to do with the quality of the ingredients and whether the fragrance was engineered to be airy. I think that's really the main thing. As for notes being associated with a certain kind of season, I understand why that might be why that might be true for some people. But in my case, I don't know. Truth is, I want to try all of them now, but there's only so much arm space. And spray would do. I don't need to do too. Maybe I'm speaking too soon, but it's powdery. Or maybe just in the first couple of seconds. It's powdery just in the first couple of seconds. It smells like soap. It's, I like it. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Now it's blooming and now it's gorgeous. It kind of smells like Dove soap. I can't not smell at this point, and this is the first time I'm testing it. And it's just been a couple of minutes, just three minutes, it's been two minutes, just been two minutes, and yeah, it reminds me of, of Dove moisturizing soap. I'm not saying that it smells exactly like Dove moisturizing soap. I'm just saying that there's something about, like, a part of it, a part of Muscane really does smell like Dove. It's very clean, very polished. It doesn't smell cheap. It shouldn't smell cheap. At retail, this goes for something like $185 or something like that. Should it better not smell cheap. And it doesn't. I like it. I like it. I can't stop. I can't stop sniffing. Yeah, total win. Eventually, I'll come up with a more detailed review. I'm so glad I went for it. More and more, I'm not really comfortable telling a viewer like you to, oh, you have to get it, you need it, or something like that. No, I just want to, I want to describe fragrances as I perceive them, and then it's really entirely up to you, as it is entirely up to you, if you're gonna get it or not. And I just want to come up with fairly, fairly well-detailed descriptions, or I just want to bring up the salient points about a certain fragrance and I am not trying to sell you anything. Let's put it that way. Ankara Noir Sport is also a sure win in my book. Really glad I got it now, finally. For the longest time, I've, wa I've been wanting to put out a list of top 10 summer GPs. The main thing that stopped me from making that list is that I haven't tried this. And I feel like it's just wrong for me to do a top 10 summer GPs without having tried this first because it's been recommended by other people. And after smelling it, yeah, it's, it, it will find a place there, definitely. Now, I don't want to open Bois de Riz yet. I think I'll wait until later. Um, but I'm really excited to try Le Bain from Yoke. I first learned about Le Bain from people in Fragrantica who were comparing it to Carner Barcelona Stardust. And then the second time I came across it was when um, the nose knows that really supremely intelligent woman from somewhere in the Bay Area. It's one of her favorite cheapies. And so it turned into a must try. Mm. Is this going to find its way into top 10 inexpensive fragrances for summer. Oh, the similarity to Tardus is there, at least for the first 15 seconds. There are greener aspects to Le Bain. Is it good? Should you blind buy? It's so cheap. Do you think that you should blind buy? 
none of my business, but it's good. I like it. In fact, I think I like it more than I like Carner Barcelona Stardust. Yes, eventually I'll do a side by side. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again and have a Merry Christmas.